Turkey, Finland and Sweden commit to fight disinformation and prevent their domestic laws from being abused for the benefit or promotion of terrorist organizations, including through activities that incite violence against Turkey. This is very concerning. The wording here is very vague. It can go from, okay, literally nothing changes to some very concerning rollbacks of, of civil and amnesty rights here that I'm not happy about. A few months ago, I made a video regarding Sweden and Finland's prospective membership to NATO, uh, at the end of which I think I said that I would be in favor of both of them joining the alliance. And at the time, they hadn't officially submitted any applications yet, but there was broad popular support to join NATO in both of the countries. Now, since then, uh, both Finland and Sweden jointly submitted their applications for uh, NATO, but those applications were blocked by Turkey, who has veto power. From my understanding, every single NATO member has veto power when it comes to blocking applications, and the reasons for that is they want to make sure and minimize internal conflict within NATO nations, and therefore they want to give every single NATO nation the opportunity to decline a new nation from joining the alliance. And essentially, because of this, uh, Turkey was able to block Finland and Sweden from joining NATO for a long period of time. The reasons for this is because Turkey perceived that Finland and Sweden were going too easy on the PKK and the Kurds, who have been in a conflict with Turkey for a pretty long time now, essentially, where people have said that, you know, Swedes have been, uh, or Sweden as a nation, has been uh, doing things like putting up an arms embargo against Turkey for some of their actions, specifically in northern Syria, that they have refused Turkey's extradition requests when it comes to people accused or under suspicion of being involved in the PKK, and then for having a domestic a uh, politician even, a member of parliament that is more sympathetic to the uh, the Kurdish, um, yeah, the Kurdish movement outside Turkey there and has even sub uh, like submitted some uh, some support for them and the political parties there. And because of this, Turkey was not prepared to let Finland and Sweden join unless certain conditions were met. And after some deliberations, it seems like they came to an agreement and now, as it stands, Sweden and Finland are set to join NATO because Turkey has essentially been satisfied with new conditions. Right now, I'm going to give my take on the memorandum, the trilateral memorandum that was agreed upon between Turkey, Finland and Sweden, give my overall takes on the situation and some things that I am worried about. So without that, uh, with that out of the way, sorry, we'll, uh, we'll begin reading this. It's only three pages long, but I think it's important that we read all of it. Uh, that way as well, if I get something incorrect uh, and I, I, I misread something or I misunderstand something or there's something I simply do not have any knowledge about, uh, somebody in the comments or whatever who knows a bit more can feel free to correct me. So here we go. Point one. Today, the representatives of Turkey, Finland and Sweden under the auspices of the NATO Secretary General have agreed the following. NATO is an alliance based on the principles of collective defense and the indivisibility of security as well as common values. Turkey, Finland, and Sweden affirm their adherence to the principles and values enshrined in the Washington Treaty. So this is just basic NATO joining stuff. One of the key elements of the alliance is unwavering solidarity and cooperation in the fight against terrorism in all its forms and manifestations, which constitutes a direct threat to the national security of allies as well as to international peace and security. And here is where now we get into more of the specific things between Turkey and Finland and Sweden. As prospective NATO allies, Finland and Sweden extend their full support to Turkey against threats to its national security. To that effect, Finland and Sweden will not provide support to the YPG, PYD, and the organization described as FETO in Turkey. Turkey also extends its full support to Finland and Sweden against threats to their national security. Finland and Sweden reject and condemn terrorists in all its forms and manifestations in the strongest terms. Finland and Sweden unambiguously condemn all terrorist organizations perpetrating attacks against Turkey and express their deepest solidarity with Turkey and the families of the victims. Finland and Sweden confirm that the PKK is a proscribed terrorist organization. Finland and Sweden uh, commit to prevent activities of the PKK and all other terrorist organizations and their extensions, as well as activities by individuals in affiliated and inspired groups or networks linked to these terrorist organizations. Turkey, Finland and Sweden have agreed to step up cooperation to prevent the activities of these terrorist groups. Finland and Sweden reject the goals of these terrorist organizations. So far, there isn't actually super... Um, yeah, none of this is super groundbreaking. So Finland and Sweden have confirmed 
for like long ago for multiple decades that the pkk is a terrorist organization i think sweden was even the first country in the european union to do so 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 far it's just more of a reiteration that like hey by the way just stating it again restating this the pkk is a terrorist organization and obviously terrorism bad so this restate this so we have this in the agreement here so so far None of this is, is particularly groundbreaking. It's just reaffirming things that have previously already been determined between Finland, Sweden, Turkey, and the international community. Further to this, Finland refers to several recent amendments of its criminal code by which new acts have been enacted as punishable terrorist crimes. The latest amendment entered into force on the 1st of January 2022, by which the scope of the participation in the activity of a terrorist group has been widened. At the same time, public incitement related to terrorist offenses was criminalized as a separate offense. Sweden confirms that a new tougher terrorist offenses act enters into force on 1st of July and that government is preparing further tightening of counterterrorism legislation. Turkey, Finland, or Sweden now confirm that there are no national arms embargoes in place between them. Sweden is changing its national regulatory framework for arms exports in relation to NATO allies in a future in future, defense exports from Finland and Sweden will be conducted in line with Alliance Solidarity and in accordance with the letter and spirit of Article 3 of the Washington Treaty. So here is where we get into some of the major concessions that Turkey has been able to collect. So uh, a while back, Sweden uh, started an arms embargo against Turkey. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but Sweden is actually a fairly prolific arms manufacturer and seller. So while Sweden itself may not have like a super strong military or whatever, we do manufacture a lot of weapons and we do sell a lot of them internationally. And it accounts for like a fairly big part of, uh, you know, like international uh, exports from Sweden. We're, we're a pretty large arms salesman internationally. However, given some of the actions from Turkey when it comes to the way that they're fighting against the Kurds and particularly for their actions in northern Syria, Sweden decided to set up an arms embargo against Turkey and saying that like, hey, as long as you're doing these things, we're not going to provide you with any arms for us. Now, I support this. I support the arms embargo in this instance. I think that the actions from Turkey in those regions has been very, very heavy handed and has been yeah absolutely disproportionate and is condemnable and i think that sweden's action to start that arms embargo was a good decision to make and i think that this now being you know relinquished as an effect of this treaty coming into place um is a bad thing however i also recognize the difficulties in allowing sweden or finland to be able to enter in this case sweden specifically to enter a nato alliance when they currently have an arms embargo against another member in the alliance there is definitely a conflict of interest there so i am not quite sure if it even would have been possible to have sweden enter the alliance without this you know amendment here um, and i am not quite sure whether or not the, uh, the the value gained to sweden from their joining of the alliance outweighs this and some of the other harms that we're going to see from the treaty as a whole so with that being said let's keep reading today turkey finland and sweden commit to the following concrete steps establish a joint structured dialogue and cooperation mechanism at all levels of government including between law enforcement and intelligence agencies to enhance cooperation on counterterrorism organized crime and other common challenges as they so decide this is just basic NATO stuff. Nothing groundbreaking here. Finland and Sweden will conduct the fight against terrorism with determination, resolve, and accordance with the provisions of the relevant NATO documents and policies, and will take all required steps to further tighten domestic legislation to this end. Once again, just NATO things. Finland and Sweden will address Turkey's pending deportation or extradition requests of terror suspects expeditiously and thoroughly, taking into account information evidence, and intelligence provided by Turkey, and establish necessary bilateral legal frameworks to facilitate extradition and security cooperation with Turkey in accordance with the European Convention on Extradition. Now, the biggest issue with this here is that they didn't include an Oxford comma after evidence here. This grammatical structure is underwhelming, especially for coming from a NATO uh, security, uh, you know, amendment. But seriously, though, um, this is troubling. So, Turkey has sent some 32 extradition requests to Sweden, I believe, 
for people suspected to be involved with the PKK and Turkish autonomous, sorry, Kurdish uh, autonomous movements. And Sweden has declined to process, not to process, to, to accept these extradition requests and has denied every single one of them. However, now that this is an amendment here, we'll see how that's going to go in the future. Now, note that it's not explicitly stated here that Finland and Sweden have to process and have to, you know, abide by these extradition requests. All that's written here in the literature is that they will be done expeditiously and thoroughly, taking into account information, evidence, and intelligence provided by Turkey. And establish necessary bilateral legal frameworks to facilitate extradition security cooperation with Turkey. So it's not directly saying that, hey, you have to do this, but it's vague enough to imply that this is a step up from what's currently happening. So exactly how this will play out, I'm not sure. I'm generally, whenever I read things like laws, policy platform, international treaties, I'm generally very skeptical of vague things like this. Now, vagueness has a value in treaties because there are certain things that exactly how they will shake out concretely, it's difficult to determine exactly, but just a general agreement to live up to and to strive towards a given value or a given virtue. And that's okay to have in treaties. That's a part of any treaty. Um, however, when it comes to something fairly concrete like this, like specific extradition treaties, when there is a history between Sweden, Finland, and Turkey in this regard, this vagueness is a bit worrying because we don't know exactly what this entails. We don't know if Sweden is still fully within the right to um, reject Turkey's extradition request, specifically when this is paired with all the general NATO anti-terrorist things that we see are being signed off on on this treaty. And this is worrying. I think that uh, I think that there are good reasons to give certain uh, yeah Kurdish uh, autonomous fighters uh, amnesty within Sweden, and I'm worried that this might risk it. I am not happy about this part of the treaty either. But once again, it brings into question like, hey, you know, does it really make sense for a country to join NATO when they have? you know, people within their nation that another NATO country deems as terrorists and wants to be, wants to have them extradited. That, that's the issue that we're running into this with. Next point. Finland and Sweden will investigate and interdict any financing and recruitment activities of the PKK and all other terrorist organizations and their extensions, as well as affiliates or inspire groups or network as outlined in paragraph five. Um, yeah, this once again, it's fairly vague. But this doesn't seem super, super bad. Um, this seems to make sense. Turkey, Finland, and Sweden commit to fight disinformation and prevent their domestic laws from being abused for the benefit or promotion of terrorist organizations, including through activities that incite violence against Turkey. This is very concerning. Um, yeah, I don't like this. This is some spooky stuff. So Turkey already ranks really poorly when it comes to freedom of the press, freedom of speech. I think, hold on, let me actually check that. Turkey, freedom of press ranking. I don't think that they rank very, yeah, okay. Not free. Um, 149th. Okay, 149th out of 180 countries. Okay, Turkey's not doing particularly well. So when there's an agreement between Turkey, Finland, and Sweden... Um, specifically where Sweden and Finland are committing to fighting disinformation uh, and things related to activities that incite violence against Turkey, that's that's some spooky stuff. Um, I don't like this part of the, the, the treaty at all. I think that this is probably the part of the treaty that I feel is least necessary. I can understand to some extent these other ones, like the one about the deportations, the one about the arms embargoes, when I say I understand, it doesn't mean I agree with them. It merely means I understand how this would make sense, given the regulatory framework of an international military alliance. But this one here seems to be a bit, a bit of an overstep. It seems unnecessary. It seems outside the necessary functionings and things that are entailed by NATO as a military alliance. And this is some scary stuff. Um, let me read this again. So... 
Turkey, Finland and Sweden commit to fight disinformation and prevent their domestic laws from being abused for the benefit or promotion of terrorist organizations, including through activities that incite violence against Turkey. Shows expressing support for the Kurds, you know, like a, a group of people and organizations that have helped large parts and many NATO nations in, for example, and, you know, regions there in, in, in the Middle East in fighting against Islamic terrorists, for instance. Uh, is expressing support for valuable allies in that conflict now going to be considered promotion of terrorist organizations? I'm not sure. And once again, we get to another issue with the vagueness of these terms. So, you know, this could go either way. This one is fairly unambiguous. The ending of, of, of the, the national arms embargo, fairly unambiguous. This is something that's going to happen. The extradition requests and the disinformation requests are fairly vague. It could end up on either side, but we're not sure. And because it's fairly vague, it can be anything from that. Okay, Finland and Sweden still has their right to process things according to their um, determinations of amnesty. Uh, yeah, like of international amnesty. Or it can be like, hey, there's a lot of pressure on them to actually accept a lot of these Turkey extradition treaties. It might be that Finland and Sweden maintains that there is a capability to be able to express support for Kurdish movements without it being considered promotion of terrorist organizations, or it might be the case that that is now considered promotion of terrorist organizations. We're not sure. The wording here is very vague. It can go from, okay, literally nothing changes to some very concerning rollbacks of, of civil and amnesty rights here that I'm not happy about. Finland and Sweden will ensure that their respective national regulatory frameworks for arms exports enable new commitments to allies and reflects their status as NATO members. So it's that arms treaty thing again, uh, arms embargo thing again. Finland and Sweden commit to support the fullest possible involvement of Turkey and other non-EU allies in the existing and prospective initiatives of the European Union's common security and defense policy, including Turkey's participation in the PESCO project on military mobility. This is more like EU related stuff. For the implementation of these steps, Turkey, Finland and Sweden will establish a permanent joint mechanism with the participation of experts from the Ministries of Foreign Affairs, Interior and Justice, as well as intelligence services and security institutions. The permanent joint mechanism will be open for others to join. Turkey confirms its long-standing support for NATO's open-door policy and agrees to support the 2020 Madrid summit, the invitation of Finland and Sweden to become members of NATO. And then it's signed by representatives from Turkey, Finland and Sweden. So all in all, these are my thoughts on the treaty. I am not happy with this treaty. I am very concerned about it, particularly on the ones that are, are very ambiguous and particularly about the disinformation one, which not only is extremely vague, um, not only provides prospective uh, fears towards freedom of press and freedom of speech, but also seems super outside the necessary parts or amendments for a NATO agreement. Um, even though I might disagree with them, it seems like the, the, the deportations and the extradition ones and the arms embargo seem like they would be necessary steps. That if Sweden wants to be NATO, this is something that has to change. And that sucks, um, but you would need to weigh then the harms from these embargoes and then um, that, that compared to the, the harms of stopping the embargoes compared to the harms of not coming into NATO. And for that, I am actually a bit undecided at the moment because there, there are some spooky things here. But the disinformation clause specifically seems really unnecessary. Um, it seems like a, like a loss for Sweden that didn't need to be taken or the loss for Finland and Sweden that didn't need to be taken. And it's, uh, it's, it's very concerning. So the three most concerning things, ending of the arms embargo, the um the processing of new extradition requests expeditiously and thoroughly and then the disinformation one the disinformation thing i think is just blanket awful i i, I don't think this belongs here i am very unhappy with this presence here for the other two i have a hard time understanding how sweden might be able to join nato without those two amendments if sweden was able to do so without those two that would be incredible. I would be pleasantly surprised if that was the case, um, but it seems difficult to do so. One of them is worded fairly ambiguously that it seems to still be possible that Sweden actually has no obligation to still process and turn over 
these people at the extradition request of Turkey. So that's a beneficial thing that one of these things which I thought were kind of necessary is at least done fairly vaguely so it can still fall on the side that I would prefer to fall on. But then the arms embargo one is, is fairly clearly um, that like, hey, this needs to stop now. And if that means... No, okay. Um, so yeah, all in all, I'm not very happy with this agreement, even though I am generally in favor of Sweden and Finland joining NATO. Um, it seems like the really big winner in this was Turkey and that Sweden and Finland conceded to some things that are really spooky, really vague, and don't seem like they were necessary to, uh, to be able to enter this treaty because they seem outside the scope of what is usually um, included in these military alliance uh, agreements. But I might be mistaken. But that's my take on this overall. I like Sweden and Finland being in NATO. But I'm not happy with these conditions under which they had to join NATO. So uh, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if I got anything incorrect here, if there's an extra piece of analysis that you felt like I should have included um, or anything else of that matter, please leave a comment and I'll read them and check out if there's anything that I missed or that warranted further talking about or further mentioning. But yeah, with that out of the way, thank you very much.